Constructing your life is about much more than just building a bank account. Each week, join real estate entrepreneur and mindset coach Austin Linney as he interviews guests who are constructing their dream lives and impacting the world around them on a daily basis. If you're an entrepreneur or wanting to start a business, or you just want to hear motivating stories of how others have overcome the odds, you are in the right place. And now for your host, Austin Linney. Okay. All right. Good afternoon, guys. It's Austin Lenny with Construct Your Life. We have him safe. He's here. He did not hurt himself in between uh, the things. We got Mr. Corey in the house. How are you doing, sir? Good, man. Yeah, that was the uh, first time I ever had to cancel a podcast on that one, so I felt kind of bad. But I cracked my tooth when it rained like a centimeter, mm-hmm. and uh, like I fell and I hurt. My- I've hurt myself multiple times cycling. Yeah. And I went to the bike shop and the guy was like, um, your tires are like three sizes too small. That's why you failed. Don't do it. He's oh like, gosh. you're, he's like, you're going to lose speed, but you won't kill yourself. And I was like, like I'm good with that. Sign me up. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. I had my bike tuned up before I started really training and they said, I need new tires at some point, not size wise, just worn out. And so I bought new tires just cause I don't want to have like a blowout or something, but you know, riding, falling, I think. I think I fell the day before and I was just like mentally unprepared. I was still trying to work, but I was like limping around. So I'm like, dude, I, I, I don't think I'm going to show up well for this thing. So, so here we are. Well, here we are. And what's interesting is, is half the battle is showing up and having the wherewithal to, you know, as, especially as men, Mm -hmm. you know, back out, you know, one of the, Mm -hmm. one of the biggest things, and we'll get to your story. One of the biggest things I've learned is if I'm not feeling it is to pull the rip cord and and regroup because it's not, it's not on, you know, it's not on the other person's problem. If I'm, if I'm dealing with some stuff and dude, it takes so much self-discipline to do that. It's tough. It's tough. It's tough, man. I'm like pride myself just like you do. And every other guy on like always being able to do X regardless Mm -hmm. of how much sleep I got, how much, how bad, bad my body feels, all that stuff. And I'm kind of slowly learning that. So you were my first guinea pig on that situation is to like actually reach out and be like, Hey, I think this might not be the best idea. So, uh, and thanks what for, you do, thanks for and what you a good experience. <laughs> yeah. And what you do is you try to slip it in. Just like, like maybe they're, the maybe water. they're, maybe they're busy too. You know, like, <laughs> like can I get out? That's what I did it too. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. No, and it's like, and like, you know, what's interesting is like, and tell me if this has ever happened to you some yeah. days, like, I'm just hoping that they have something going mm-hmm. on or, and like, mm-hmm. and like, I don't know if you kind of almost manifest it, but it's like, know. it is weird, but it's like, boom, yeah. they're like, Hey man, I'm really busy. I'm like, Oh yeah. no, it's totally cool. So, yeah. but, but what's interesting is I feel like your business that you do for a living is kind of a cult a little bit. Cause it seems like, or maybe Arte seems to be the group where they all hang out with If It, it feels like there's a lot of y'all in the Which, group of what, a lot of what of the dent repair. Oh yeah. There's actually like five of us. I was shocked. <laughs> I never met anybody before the shocked, mastermind dude. Yeah. <laughs> like it's very, it's a very tiny little niche. Um, automotive itself is huge. Everyone's heard of, you know, detailing cars, um, body shops, you know, replacing bumpers, all that stuff. And then you keep niching down. And then there's us people that do what I do, which is basically fixing the metal portion of the vehicle without using any paint. So we're manipulating the metal back from the inside, typically back, pushing it flat. And you and, do uh, some coaching too, right? Yeah. And so that's my kind of spin off of what so I do. So what's interesting is the metaphor. Yeah between that so you're manipulating metal for sure mm-hmm. you're doing the same thing in your coaching probably. that's true yeah yeah and and i i've actually you know what i don't think i've ever thought about it that way but i've said this a million different times to my customers is um it's not that i'm forcing against the metal i'm not like forcing it to a new place i'm actually working with the metal to bring it back where it wants to be and so i'm going to definitely start using that now because that's so true we all have this place where we want to be and it's not like a it's not a forceful thing to get there it's just like guiding it back along the way and that's what i do with metal and with people yeah Um, and it's 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 one of it's one of those things where 
um, I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle of a, a coaching certification. So it's the first time I've ever done anything like this. The only reason nice. I'm doing it is because these guys are crazier than hell. They're awesome. They, they yeah. call themselves the pirates. They're kind of out there. <laughs> and, and one of the things he taught, he's a language expert. And one of the things he talks about is how you, okay, let's say you say, um, um, I don't know how I can ever get over this. Mm-hmm. Sounds mm-hmm. defeatist and sounds like, oh my God, sure. I don't know how. I can get over this. Mm -hmm. So take out the one word and it sounds like I got all the opportunities. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so what's interesting about business, right? And you, and you coach people on business is I think a lot of people don't understand that it's not hard to get into business. It's hard to stay in business. (laughs) That's true. (laughs) Because especially with technology, right? And so when you're, when you're coaching and you're learning, what, 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 what have you learned that you love to pass along to other people? You know, a lot of my audience is in the twenties yeah. um, trying to build business or real estate. What, what have you learned over the years to stay in business? For Honestly, especially now, now, nowadays, if I could say that it, it's a commitment to a direction. Um, we just went through this. We're actually adding additional services into our our business. So we won't just do paintless dent repair. We'll do um, paint restoration and coatings on vehicles and um, bringing on my brother-in-law who loves to detail his own car really into his truck, always takes care of it, but has this hard time of like picking a direction because uh, committing to one thing, especially in the eyes of millennials and whatever generation X, Y, or Z, whatever comes after millennials. I don't know what the twenties are. What is that? Z? X Z. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna send you a video. <laughs> okay. So I can't remember. I don't Dude, know what the cutoff gonna, dates you might are. Listen, you might watch it like ten times. It's the funniest. Yeah, thing yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so the Z is they, they they grew up in a world where they see every type of success possible, whether it's um through through Instagram or or athletes or actors and actresses or tech millionaires or Bitcoin million billionaire, whatever. And they see all these things and they're like, if I commit to doing this thing, then that means that I don't get to do all these other things. And then five, six, seven years goes by and they haven't done something. Right. So what I've learned of being, you know, I'm 35 now and I've committed to doing multiple things in my life is that committing to doing one thing and going down that road actually opens up other opportunities. And, you know, just because you're going down one road in business doesn't mean you can't pay attention to other things. You can't start, maybe start, not start another business with something else, but pay, you can pay attention to the stock market. You can pay attention to Bitcoin or NFTs or whatever else you think is going to make you the next millionaire. You can pay attention to that, but you have to, at some point, commit to doing something, commit to going down a road like you are, and then other doors will open and you can make new commitments or additional commitments that, that really kind of are in your zone of genius on that. So yeah. that's the thing I would say is you, you got to commit to go in one direction at least. Yeah. And I think I'm committed towards growth. Like, mm-hmm. and, and the thing is, is like, I, you know, I just got off the call with the coaching client. I think mm-hmm. a lot of people try to model other people, but mm-hmm. I also think that you need to understand that like I am and my girlfriend jokes about this all the time. I am totally comfortable having seven different text messages going on at the exact same time about mm-hmm. seven different things. Sure. <laughs> like yeah. it, podcast interview, seven, mm-hmm. you know, this business helping this person out. And like, that's where my brain compartmentalizes everything. Yeah. So for me, it's like, okay, to podcast this and everything, yeah. but understand that that alone on itself is very hard too. like, yeah. you've, this is something that's not talked about enough. And I just finished a book on this is like, these niche markets Mm -hmm. like so so i do car detailing great no no i do this let's go nine layers even further yes even further now and then i'm then i'm directly sourcing my client yeah that way my marketing is not all over the place and it's like i'm where do these people hang out what are they doing that, that's huge. I work on clients at Avatar with my people. I mean, in, in a niche, whoever's listening to this podcast, 95% of you have never heard of paintless dent repair. Even inside of paintless dent repair, there's five to seven niches inside of inside of this, or probably even more than that. So like we need about five, you know, three to five thousand customers a year for a, a million dollar business, right? We're not very many people. I live in Sacramento, California. There's two million people out here. I need three to five thousand of them. I'm not, I don't need to take over the whole city, right? So who are those people? Right. Mm-hmm. So and like tiny little PDR, paintless dent repair niche, 
I only work on these types of cars for these types of people. This is where they shop. This is how many kids they have. This is the city they live in. This is how much money they make even inside of this tiny little niche. So if you're in the space of um, fitness, right? Or that's always a good one because there's a lot of coaches in that space mm-hmm. or, or nutrition, right? To who? To who? The world? Like, <laughs> come on, dude. Like you got to niche it down like 25 times to where your target market's like 100,000 people. Yeah, I got a good friend. You'd yeah. love this guy. Yeah. And he's, he's got a Tesla, so maybe I need to introduce you, but he's a yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. But he, he was in commercial real estate. Mm-hmm. And he was young. I think he got started like 20. Yeah. And he was like 24. And he's like, dude, he's like, I'm exhausted. He's like, this is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. He's like, I'm running around town. I'm chasing my tail. So he decided that he wasn't going to leave a 10 mile radius in his town. Yeah. Now he's the biggest developer in Nashville. In the 10 in mile that, radius. In that 10 mile radius. <laughs> That's it, dude. That's the niche. This distance can be your niche, right? Mm-hmm. The space of which you. If, wow. If I've never heard that before. Yeah. This could be your niche. The distance yeah. can be your niche. Like the, the, your territory can be your niche. That's huge. And, right? and the question is, is you're over here and you're trying to chase this shiny object, but mm-hmm. you haven't even mastered your dist- your area. No, no. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. And and you know what I always tell him is my favorite thing because this is fucking mm-hmm. dude, man. Alex Holmes is this savage in business. Yeah. He wrote a book called uh, $100 million offers. He said, Oh, he said, You've tapped out your business. He goes, yeah. How about you do your business three days a week? Yeah. He goes, Then you tell me if you tapped out your business. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. it's, it's so like my first, dude, my dude. first thing with my coach, I'm like, Hey, what if I told you you didn't have to do, you couldn't do business on Friday? And they're like, mm. oh, oh, God. Yeah. Like dude. I'm like, Yeah, I just changed so your whole true. life. So a year ago, I decided to become a coach in my industry. So a niche, right? That my coaching niche is paintless dent repair. I dare any other niche out there to be better at coaching paintless dent repair. Any other coach out there to be better at coaching dent repair guys than I am, except for maybe like the top guys in the world that can whatever, right? But like, am I a better coach than pick your favorite coach in the world, Tony Robbins or any of these people? No, but in paintless dent repair, Mm -hmm. I have this niche that no one else knows about, mm-hmm. right? So I chose to do that and and help people in my industry because I've built a business and I know they can as well. Um, and I took Tuesdays off. Right when the pandemic hit, our, our business slowed a little bit, right? As, as did a lot of things. And so I'm like, all right, this is the perfect time. Tuesdays, I'm coaching, podcasting, mastermind group, marketing that that business, right? And now I I needed to go back to dent repair five days a week. Um, but I never did. And my numbers and my business and everything came back to where it was working four days a week. I took 20% of my week away and I'm at the same level. Dude, Isn't I, that crazy? I, like you it, just said. It, dude, dude, I just, dude, I tell you what did it for me. I th- Cause I, I, I have a weird schedule the way I do my, yeah. I do my week right now. It's a little crazy, but, yeah. um, I had an epiphany cause my last three months have beat every month with mm-hmm. the coaching business yeah. is I realized, cause I only coach on Mondays. Yeah. Now, I'm only uh, <laughs> Yeah. So what I realized is I have a, a six figure business mm-hmm. four days, working four days a month. That's when it goes. That's Should when I, I actually went, might too. I don't think I've ever done. I know. And that's, <laughs> that's actually, that's when I went. That's when I went. If I multiply, that's when I five. went. You know, so we just did the math. We just did the math. My, just, my coaching client just did the math. It was 52 days out of the year. So you <laughs> you work 14% yeah. of the year. That's yeah. It. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And so that's, that's and so yeah. that's a game changer because it mm. opens you up for other things or to be available. But, yeah. but one of my things that I had the epiphany on is, is I want to run, multiple businesses and have a coaching business working three days a week. And so I almost feel like there's going to be two different humans. Mm -hmm. There's going to be family, man, I'm present. And then there's, holy shit. He's don't mess with him today. Don't talk. Don't text him. Don't ask him to get the grocery on the way home or whatever. Like Mm -hmm. he's work mode. Yeah. Because I, because I I I think, I think we, I think that the mind can't keep up when you're, when you're pulling back going forward on Mm -hmm. so many different things that time that it takes to change the thought process. Like yeah. it's really easy to know that Monday mornings it's, you know, 6 a.m. Yeah. to this and I coach and then I'll do some podcast. Yeah. And then, and then I've switched and it's okay, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. but like that's taken some time to like cultivate that. And let's be honest, when I made the decision that all my bit, now it's different for you, but I made a decision that all my businesses were going to run from my phone. Mm-hmm. Like it didn't happen overnight. It takes yeah. a long time and we're finally there. Um, 
but it for doesn't sure. mean I'm but satisfied. Yeah, to- totally agree. And then you make new goals and do all that um, as well. But I totally agree with you. The three three to four days a week thing. I have three kids and a wife, and so I want that as well. And I have solid boundaries I've created in my life currently, and I want those boundaries to uh, for family and and travel and things to open up more and have my work condensed down. I realized I couldn't do that physically doing my work that I did. Right, physically pushing down. There there was an actual physical limit that my my physical pushing ability is unscalable to a certain point. Well, There's, let I me can, ask you, I let me ask you a question. Edges, let me ask you a question. Yeah. Why wouldn't you, sorry, sorry you know, to talk your business free. out on the yeah. podcast. You know, why, it. wouldn't why, you, why wouldn't you change your coaching program to accelerator program? And you, instead of them paying you for coaching, mm-hmm. you come a consultant in their business and grow franchises across the country. Yeah. So if you want to go nitty gritty, I will. We started as a franchise, this company right here started as a franchise and it did not work. And I know why it did not work. Why is that? Um, Because the franchisor did not provide enough proprietary information that couldn't be gotten elsewhere in the world. They didn't provide um, specific training, specific marketing, specific contracts with large dealership groups or car maxes or things like that. They didn't provide that thing. Um, And that's why that franchise model failed. So that is my goal. Step number one of that goal was to create influence and become a leader of my industry, which took me about a year to do that. Um, And that should be, if you want to grow a a group coaching, a mastermind, a franchise, you're in Arte as well. That's how we met, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Oh gosh, dang it. This guy's name out of Florida, who's building uh, uh, Platinum Fitness, I believe it is. Do you know uh, that guy? Aaron? Aaron Nash. Yeah. Um, became influential in that space through Arate, through meeting the Arate guys, influential in that space. So when he opened up the franchise opportunities, it was really easy. It was really easy. <laughs> it was really easy. Yeah. And so that's kind of the path that I'm running that's, down. Because here's the here's the rubber that, yeah. that people don't want to tell you the dirty little secret. Yeah. People really don't want to be that creative. <laughs> they they want a Give pathway. me the keys pathway. Yeah. yeah. Give me the pathway. Mm-hmm. Tell me how to make money because the problem that we live in this world is everybody thinks that, they, that what people, other people value, you value. Uh-uh. Yes. No. That's true. Mm-hmm. Meaning, meaning tell me how I'm going to put 50,000 in yeah. and I'm going to get this much back for the next 10 years. Okay, good. I'm good. So you, good. so let me get this straight. I just do this and this is what I get. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay, great. So yeah. they're, they're good. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So that is, that is the model. Um, and that, that is where I'm going, but this is the, this is in my opinion, I love that. the start of the five-year plan to, to yeah, get I'm building out something very similar. I'm building yeah. a media company that has mm-hmm. the marketing, the podcasting, the sales training, the business consulting awesome. and the M&A. Right. And yeah. so this is my legacy project. Yeah. And what's interesting is, is that it takes a really big uh, pair of, you know, what, and a, yeah. and a big vision mm-hmm. to even attempt it because I'll be honest with you. I could be, and I'm not saying this off glib. I'm, I'm being dead serious. I could be a millionaire just working for my mentor. Like if I wanted to in five or six years, sure. But that's not what it's about. I agree with you too. And I could, if I just, hired two or three employees and just fixed dents forever. I could easily do that as well. Do you ever wrestle? Do you ever wrestle with it? Cause I'm wrestling with time. it today. I'm like, All the time. I'm like, dude, I could just work three days yeah. a week and could just chill. I don't have to do any of this other stuff. I don't have to worry about. Yeah. But, and you've done that and I've done that. And then it, I guess during that process, there's always something else that's missing, I guess, or not there. Like the legacy thing, like I could do that, but I don't want to just skate. Or I don't want to just take the the simple path to do that because you don't change the world, even though that seems like a big a big statement. But if I'm able to take my industry, which no one else is ever able to do, take my industry, legitimize it, franchise it, and make it well known to at least the US, potentially the world, I will have changed the world through the fact that if you, most people out there right now, if uh, someone opens their door into their car, they take their car to a body shop, they get it repainted, that door gets thrown into the dumpster and then gets sent off and smashed and recycled. That changes, that's changes the world. I can prevent all that stuff from happening, right? And I can fix their car in a day, um, way cheaper, way faster, no insurance, no repainting, all that stuff. It's changing the world in my own little teeny tiny way, but 
that's what I want. Like that's the legacy I want to have. Like, and they, they say this, once you reach a certain amount of money, it's like the money isn't the driver. It's great. I want more money. Like no one's going to deny that, but it's not the primary driver because it doesn't make you that much happier. Like I can get a nicer car and I like cars and that's awesome. And I can go on cooler vacations. That's really cool too. But that's not, that's not why I work so hard. If that's why you work so hard, you'll stop eventually. Cause there's, it's, there's, it, it, there's yeah, not enough. Because, because my new thing I'm on right now is motivation is bullshit. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's it is. It is. It's got, it's yeah. discipline. It's got to be bigger. Right. Look, 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 I, I, literally I'm saying this because it's top of mind. Mm. I have blown myself away and I don't know why. And mm. I'm not going to try to figure it out what I've done in the last 90 days, mm. which I never thought was possible. And nothing really changed. Yeah. Like I know. Meaning, it, it meaning, 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 meaning like, meaning like I still have all the friends in the world to yep. have any vacation I want. Yep. I still have every opportunity I've ever wanted. Now there might be more opportunities. So I've got to mm. like dump, you know, I got to slow yep. that down a little bit, but ultimately I think everybody needs to get there to go. Hmm, okay. Like, yeah. you know, my dad always, I don't have the greatest relationship with my father, but my dad was probably the number one dentist in, in, in Texas for you know, 30, 40 years. And he said, he said, Austin, I know this is going to sound really stupid. But he says, once you make around 250 to 300, yeah, he goes, eh. yeah, after that, he goes, you kind of already have everything you need. You don't really yeah, need, need for shit. sure. Need for sure. <laughs> Way past yeah. need. Yeah. Especially in Texas, 250 in so, California. So I, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I, but I think, but I think one of the issues is, is that we have supercharged our lifestyle, mm-hmm. meaning you, you have to. Now, now, now you've come to a place where, well, I've got to pay for that big house. I've got to pay for these cars I don't need. I've got to pay for yeah. this thing. I've got to pay for this suit that I don't wear. Like mm-hmm. I have a buddy, I have a buddy who trades eighty to hundred million dollar apartments mm-hmm. uh, in L.A. And his kind of joke is he does it in like a fucking tracksuit because he he just likes yeah, to fuck with the other can. guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he tries to fuck with the other guys. I would totally you know, be that he guy. He goes because all the other guys are Marcus yeah. and Miller oh, Champ and yeah, suits. Totally you know? I don't, even so, heard, I don't even know what that suit company is. That's it's so me. he said, he said, no, it's a, it's a, it's a brokerage that are all like Harvard. Dudes, oh, oh yeah. Like, okay, yeah. You know, like, and he said, and he said, what's interesting. He said, when you start dealing with like his clients, like the Wrigley family, he said, what's interesting is that when you start meeting the billionaires, the billionaires, he said, all the guys in suits are working for the dudes that are wearing sweatpants. Yeah, that's true. That are in the billionaires. And he goes, when you sit in the room with them, he goes, do you think they give a fuck about where I went to mm. school or yeah. what? No, they care about the deal you're bringing to them. And yeah. that's what you realize is all these people down here playing small or yeah. playing in the kiddie pool. They're worried about the little drama and stuff. Everybody mm-hmm. else is doing business. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. I like and, that. and so at the end of the day, what do you think is the one or two three things that uh, like a business, somebody building a business are, are getting wrong right out the gate. What are they getting wrong when building a business? Yeah. Oh, I mean, I'll go back to my first thing. This is just because it's been so important in my life. And recently is like the, the, the commitment is the biggest thing to, to say you're going to do it. Like if you're going to, to start a business and Everyone that starts a business has has thought past the first sale. Obviously, they thought about the million dollar this and the car and the making all the money and all that stuff. And that starts with the commitment on day one of going out and doing what you think is necessary to get you to tomorrow, to get you to the next day and do that. So I think part of it is commitment. I think being an entrepreneur is really cool or for some reason. I have no fucking clue why it's a cool thing to do because it's exhausting sometimes and daunting at other times, but it's cool for some reason. I guess the Instagram did that change that too. So um, don't do it because it's cool. Do it because you believe you have something that can serve other people and then commit to doing that. Um, I don't even know if I need more than that. I don't even know if I need two or three because I feel like that's the biggest thing. Like you said, it's not... It's it's commitment and discipline instead of motivation. Because if you're waiting for motivation to do it, that wanes. Half the days are bad and half the days are good. It depends on what you do on the bad days. Everybody can show up and do shit on the good days, right? But the day after you crash your bicycle and road rash your entire ass, what do you do two days later, right? There's no I have zero motivation to get on my bike and ride, but I've committed to that's what I'm going to do. And so that's what I do, right? Um, as long as you're physically able to, obviously. I, I really, I really wish most days that I didn't want to change the world or impact I, people. I've told my wife that 100 Be, because, times. Because if I was a car salesman yeah. or something like that, I yeah. would wreck 
I mean, yeah. I they would need they have plaques just up. If that's all yeah. I did yeah. was dude rolled in this. You suit. wouldn't though, because you can't have you can't be both those things. Like you can't like not want to be the best version of you and and help other people and be the and 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 then just work as a car salesman forever. I know, right? But, it's very but rare don't to find you? That. But don't you love those dudes that are yeah. purely? They're just, just sales, they're just, just yeah. ninjas, mm-hmm. and they're just like they don't mm-hmm. even. Like don't they're out at the club on the weekend. Yeah. Like they yeah. don't even care. I, I know one of those dudes that work at a Dodge dealership and the dude yeah. just, they show up on like Monday and they're like, good. He's to got go. his niche too. And it's like, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. He, he lives his niche though. That's another good thing though. He like the clubbing, the partying and sell and then coming back and selling the Dodge chargers and chat. Like he lives that niche. Like that is who well, if his he, people. If he, well, well, you know what my favorite. Quote, I guarantee I, you, I, he probably sells cars while he's there and says, "Come see me tomorrow." And I'll my say, my favorite quote is, "If you are authentically you, you yeah. will not have any competition." That's true. You can't, yeah, you can't. Yeah. And so, and so, mm. somebody said to me the other day, "Like you are your brand," and I was like, mm. "Oh my god, I've made it." I, was I know. Like, That's I was it, like, dude. I was like, if yeah. you say, I was like, if you see that and you mm. say Austin lives his brand, then. Then yeah. I have completely, and this is what I try to get all my clients to do. I, I'm right there with you on that. Like if you're, mm. if you're just you, and yeah. it was this long talk with Seth Godin and Aubrey Marcus, yeah. and he was talking about everybody saying oh, they need guys, to yeah. appease the world. Yeah. He goes, you only need 20 real clients, like yeah. 20 real clients. But we're, but you know, we're walking around and we're saying, well, you know, every time I've, every time I've reached for a client or something, mm that I knew wasn't in alignment with me, mm-hmm. I get burned every yeah, time. Every time. Yeah. Every for time. Sure. And it takes a long time to understand that. I think, I mean, Andy Frisilla did an Arte call on that one time. And and the pro the 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 bummer part about that is that it's usually the thing that you that you like the least about yourself potentially. So like Andy Frisillas was getting stabbed in the face, right? He had mm-hmm. massive scars on his face, still does to this day, just to cover it up with hair and it's like time. But in the beginning, after starting his company, that was the thing. Like, so he would go to trade shows and people would remember him by the dude that got stabbed in the face. And so like, you, like it, it's not even a competition anymore because people remembered the first form brand because the dude, like, you're not going to go recreate that to try to have that be you. But it's like, and sometimes it's like, it's your, it's your, the fact that you're like your silliness or that your sarcasm or you're that like this thing that you have like a little bit of self-conscious about, especially putting it out there on social media and being that person in real life outside of the walls of your home. That's the thing that makes you who you are. That's the brand that is uncompetable with. Right. And what is, and what is that about you? I think it's the, co- it's a combination of a couple of things. I think it's the contradiction that I have is that I am a blue collar tradesman who loves finance, business, marketing, and sales. And so uh, I actually wanted to be a financial advisor in, in a, that's what I wanted to do. My dad owns this company. I started here, left, I went and did um, uh, medical device sales and some other types of sales things, hated all that, wanted to become a financial, financial advisor, but I stole stuff when I was 18. I wasn't the greatest kid ever, right? So I stole some stuff, that's on my record. They don't hire financial advisors that stole shit in the past go figure, right? <laughs> people, they don't let people deal with money. So the, the, the thing for me is that I, I don't fit the mold of a, of a, a blue collar uh, worker. And so I think that's what, that's what attracts people to me in my little niche is that I'm, I'm, I'm someone that they kind of want to be, but I'm just different than them. You know, I don't, I don't fall under the same stereotypes as this blue collar guy that like, I don't want to stereotype too bad on that, but I don't fit that. I don't fit that, that, um, stereotype on thing. I think, I think that is my uniqueness that people, that's my brand. That's uncompetable. Did you, did you beat yourself for for a long time that you made that mistake when you were 18? Oh yeah. Yeah. How'd you get over it? Um, I guess, well, well, so let's see, I did that. Never told anybody ever. My parents knew uh, because they had to pick me up from jail, basically from the holding cell. Um, My wife knew, and that was it for probably eight, probably 14, 13 years. Um, I tried to go be a financial advisor, failed at that, and then had to come back to 
this dent repair thing that I didn't want to do anymore. Um, and I think what really got me over it was that I start I started being who I really was in the world and I real and showing up in what I was doing in this dent repair space and then affecting it in the way I wanted to affect it. Cause I love coaching. I love the, um, uh, the idea that you can be more successful, the idea that you can grow, go past where your parents were, the lot that you got in life and you don't have to stay in the blue collar. You don't have to stay and do this thing forever. So I started leaning more into that. And then I started telling that story like that. I did get that. It did affect my life that I did steal that stuff. And I guess I don't really know if there was a moment in time but it was just the process of being who I really was, um, affecting this industry the way that I wanted. I wanted to be a financial advisor because I, I love the aspect of growing their money and helping other people. And so I brought that into my industry, started talking about my massive failure that I had basically as a, as a human being, like stealing stuff. And it wasn't one time. I didn't get stole once and got caught, obviously, right? I got caught eventually. And so just sharing that and then being who I really am inside of this space that I feel like I couldn't be, you start talking about coaching and mindset and, and visualization and meditation and all these things inside of the blue collar space. It's a little, it does, is, isn't received as well as if you're going to go to like a real estate mastermind and talk about it probably. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so I started doing that and then telling the story. And I think o- over time, I eventually, I actually, now if I, 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 I would I could never be a financial advisor. I could never sit in a room in a desk and sell things that I think are potential conflicts of in, sell them into something that I get paid more, even though it's probably best like for some people to just like put it in real estate or to, to call Austin and syndicate a deal on a hotel or something like it was probably yeah. better, but like, uh, yeah, you should probably put it in the stock market. Cause that's, you know, and so well, I, don't, I don't think I could do it anymore. You, you made it, you made it, you made a choice to bring mm-hmm. out your shit mm-hmm. and it didn't, it wasn't in the dark anymore. So it didn't yeah. control you. It's the it's same huge. thing when I meet people, I'm, you know, homeless, drug addict, divorced, mm-hmm. alcoholic, nice to meet you, yeah. you know? And yeah. they're like, they're like, fuck you, man. And I'm like, yeah. well, your story doesn't sound that bad now. Like, yeah. And, and, yeah. and so you can, you can, is that what you were? You said, yeah, that's me. Oh, really? Yeah. So yeah. I was, a, I was a meth addict yeah. uh, at 20. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was homeless uh, briefly. And then I was an alcoholic for 20 years. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been sober for two years, nine months, and I've, yeah. I've lost 60 pounds. So yeah. uh got divorced last year. I got laid off last year. So yeah, it's a couple it's, things it, have happened. A couple, <laughs> couple things lost, lost 26 grand in my first business. I started, yeah. you know, like, yeah. you know, just many yeah. different things. And, and what people don't understand is when you blow your shit up, mm-hmm. um, there's freedom in that because there those is, things dude. don't own you anymore. And you can take what you want and walk away. <laughs> yeah, it's true, dude. That's yeah. Take what lesson you wanted out of that and not let the rest of it control um, subconsciously or, or in full consciousness, how you feel about yourself and how you show up in the world and what you're capable of doing and all that stuff. You start there's, telling people. There's something I'm still working on the concept, but there's I'm not something. percent sure. There's something really powerful about mm. being able to just let it go and start yeah. from scratch yeah, or not from scratch, but better and, and, and just kind of walk away from it because, yeah. you know, one of the things I find the most interesting with my coaching clients is you would think that alcohol or divorce or drug addiction would be the thing that holds them up the most. It's mm-hmm. not bankruptcy. Like there yeah, are people for, that haven't told, haven't yeah. told anybody that is owning their entire life because there's so much shame in America mm-hmm. around that when all they did, by the way, he's a millionaire now. Yeah. All he did was take a chance really young. Yeah. Are we supposed to beat him up for that? And now yeah. he's a millionaire. Like, mm-hmm. but, yeah. but like there was still shame around that. Like mm-hmm. he couldn't tell people. And that's so how we have it. So twisted. Yeah. Like all he was doing was taking a chance. Yeah. I think, I think I've, I mean, things happen for you, not to you, uh, is one way to put it. Um, a few different people say that, but, and it's true. You, some, the shitty part is that sometimes you just don't realize that until 10, 13, 13, 14 years later. Cause I would hate my life right now if I was a financial advisor and sitting in a room and selling, fi- like selling t- uh, the markets and reading analyst stock. I just liked it cause it sounded like a great thing at the time. Um, so that happened for me. I stole that shit so that I can never become, that's really the only way it ever really affected my life to be perfectly honest with you, except for the shame I had around it, Mm -hmm. but like physically affecting me as as a growth, um, was that I couldn't become a financial advisor. And now looking back 
two, three, four years ago, I would have hated, I would have hated it. So I'm like, I'm actually kind of glad that that happened because I might be sitting at Edward Jones right now at fucking, you know, doing zoom calls all day, trying to help people with their finances and I would hate it. So, um, understanding that all those types of things, and you'll never, you'll never be able to realize that in the moment, but look for it right later in, in, in life. Um, and if, and I guess just, uh, do something different with it. And that was what, for me, I'm like, I just never told anybody because I didn't want to, I didn't, I was protecting my own feelings. I didn't want to feel the shame and stuff. So I'm like, mm-hmm. let me try something different with that and see if that, see if that will work. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. If, uh, you're having a difficult, you know, difficult relationship with your wife or one of your kids or a business partner or something like try, try handling something in a different way. Right. Like if they, if they say something and you usually react like this, take that one second and try a different way and see if that changes the, your relationship and the way you make you feel sometimes being more vulnerable and doing all that. And that's part of what I found in, in this industry is that people wanted to hear all that shit too. Mm-hmm. In my industry, they wanted to hear that, um, you know, your mind can get you out of some of these things and that uh, visualization of, of goals isn't, isn't a, a kooky type of thing. And it actually can work. Um, and you can bring that back. You don't have to live this only this, the limited lifestyle that you've told yourself you can live. Right. And so, um, try something different and you'll be amazed at seeing how the world and how other people, the interaction with you change, I guess. And so I start telling that story and just like you did too. And like, it almost gives like a level of respect, which is weird to think, right. Oh, the dude stole stuff. And now he's at this point. That's awesome. This dude was a meth addict and a, and a, and an alcoholic for 20 years. Now he's here. That's amazing. And it's a, it's a weird how like humans can do that. You've shamed Mm -hmm. yourself for that for 20 years and you use it as a story to show the disparity of what you were to where you are now. And it's Mm -hmm. like, that's amazing that he told Yeah. And I I just said this quote, I just said this quote today is this guy. uh, Mm. He said that uh, he said, I'm not where I want to be. I'm not who I want to be, but at least I'm not who I used to be. Yeah, that's good. It's true. And and yeah. so and so the problem that will be that, right forever though. <laughs> yeah. And well, and the problem the problem is, is yeah. and especially a lot of my clients clients are in the recovery space. Yeah. Uh, they're they're fucking so ungrateful with where they are currently mm-hmm. when six months ago they would have they would have they would have yes, murdered a died human to, be to be there to be there. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what's funny is that that becomes your niche, right? Which is so weird. Like the niche that I tried to run from my entire life of like I'm not just a blue collar worker. I went to college for that reason. I wanted to be a financial advisor. I left. I went to medical device sales. I wanted to like be more than a blue collar worker, which sounds demeaning to what I currently do. Um, mm-hmm. And now after all these years of trying to run away from that thing that kept pulling me back, some version of addiction, I guess you can call it, that's my niche. And I fucking love it. And same thing with you too. Like you can relate to those people because you did that for so long. And well, that's and the interesting thing. of. And of what's interesting is two things. One, my coach said this to me, he said, you never have to worry about getting clients because you only coach what you've been through. Yeah. So, boom. The yep. second thing is, is what people don't understand is, and, and a lot of the time I do mainly business consulting mm-hmm. now. Yeah. The addictions, the, the, the addiction piece is not just about drugs and alcohol. Mm. It's about business, Something multifamily, first, emotional, yeah. emotion, addiction, mm. toxic relationship. There, yep. it, it really weaves itself into so many, especially things. the small solopreneur, even, even a large CEO of something. But I, my motto that I have in my industry for my coaching business is every, every, every business problem is a personal problem in disguise. There's so yeah. many people, so many people come to you and say like, Oh, I can't get new clients. I'm like, okay, let's, do you know how to sell? Yeah, I know how to sell. Okay. Well now we, we got to dig deeper because you don't, you don't value yourself enough to mm-hmm. put yourself out there to do whatever it is that I'm, we don't go need to go into all the scenarios on that, but it's always, um, uh, a personal problem that you have it's, to where your business isn't growing. It's, it's never not the bu- business is fault. You are the fucking business. Like what? it's never business. Yeah. No, it's, it's never, it's, it's never yeah. business because at the end of the day, you, you, you know, uh, what, what did Jim Rohn say? Like you only get paid, you know, on the level of your personal development. Mm-hmm. Like it, it, true, it, yeah. it truly is yeah. like, okay, mm-hmm. I'm coming to you for a uh, multifamily, uh, I want to get a multifamily asset. Yeah. Well, great. That's not what the fuck I do. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, and but, sure. but he, but he hires me anyway. And then like, we wound up like 
30 yards the other way. And he's like, yeah. Oh my God, my life is so much bigger than I thought. And so yes, like half the time you're, you're wrapped up in your own stuff so much that you don't even understand where you're going. Yeah. That's where the coaching comes into. Cause I don't, I, I market myself in my industry as a business coach, because, you know, we have a large business uh, over a million dollars in our industry, which is, which is, is, a, is a lot of debts to fix. Mm-hmm. Um, and so people want that and they hire me um, and, you know, to be able to, I could take them that direction. But the funny thing is, is that almost never, it's almost never the tactical advice on how to sell and market yourself to get to a million dollars. It's always in, it's always internal work. So we'll, we'll have discuss. That's what coaching is though. That's I, that's I think people poo poo the whole like life coach, business coach, mentor atmosphere. Um, but there, there are certain things that other people can see in you that you can't, or that you won't admit to yourself. And that's really what it comes down to. So I say, okay, you want to grow your business? Cool. Here's what I think you should do. You and I agree. We talk, I know your situation really well. I've spent hours on the phone with you. Here's where I think you should go. Go do that. Next week rolls around. Guess what? A lot of the stuff they didn't do. It happens all the time. What one, they don't know how to do it. Two, they're too scared to do it or something's holding it back. And then that opens up the discussion for like, okay, why didn't you do it? And then it goes into that. Then it's the personal problem. And then they get past that personal problem. And all of a sudden, now they can do this thing that they wanted to do. And it's fascinating. And dude, I've learned this my, myself over the years. And I'm it's it, it's dude, crazy. my my guys get so mad at me because yeah. like I'm like, he's like, what should I do for homework yeah. this weekend? I'm like, yeah, uh, go be outside with your girlfriend. And they're like, yeah. Fuck you, man. That's not yeah. why I hired you. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I make him. I make him read like an art book, and they're like, "Why?" Yeah, yeah. And I'm Disconnect. like, "Because depends." Because yeah. personal development gets yeah. too personal sometimes. Mm-hmm. True. And like at the end it. of the day, you got to shake it up. Yeah. You got to like it's when you see. Like, yeah, if that like, person is so gung ho that they can't, they can't get past this wall, and they think I'm gonna pay Austin five, ten, whatever grand you you hire, he's gonna get me past that wall, and then you're like, hey stop, relax, go for a walk. And they're like, fuck you, dude. I thought you were going to tell me how to do the thing. Like that's for those type of people. That's the, that's the recipe. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you get the the other, do you have the other people out of curiosity that hire you that um, think there's like a secret out there that you're just going to show them the one secret. And then they're like, Oh, that's why I paid the money. And they like are always kind kind of waiting for that secret. I'm like, dude, here's here's, here's what what I say. Here's what I say to him. And this is, it takes a lot of trust. Yeah, I say I don't need you to understand the magic. I just need you to be here for it. Yeah. Like yeah. because half the time you're yeah. half the time you know, and and mm. this is dude. I'm telling you, man. This was you mean me the client? My, yeah, this was or me you? in my beginning. This was me in my beginning. I would try to tell them or like mm. get the because I'm like, oh, I see it. Like boom. Yeah. yeah. But like ultimately, they have to do it for themselves, dude, and so and they, need I, to, they need to find it themselves too. That's the, and I. That's very hard. Part, yeah. You know what I tell you is my number one thing yeah. I say for coaches because I, I I train other coaches. Yeah. I said the hardest thing as a coach, this is about to sound like an oxymoron and a half, yeah, yeah. is for you as a coach to not be what you what they think what you think they need you to be, yes. but what they need you to be. Right. Like, and it's it's this it's this and, and I do that, and it it's actually like hardest thing as a coach, like being a coach to some people, and I've learned this after coaching for hundreds of hours now, I would say between masterminds and one-on-ones is that like, I, they've told (laughs) in their words, they told me the answer. And then I'll ask them the question like, okay, so, so if you had to identify exactly what you need to do, what is it? Like, I don't know. I'm like, dude, you just fucking said it. Like you just said, I don't want to tell you it because I want you to be like, Oh, like that's, I just, you know? And so that's the weirdest thing is that like, I get the, I get the, I get the text message. you know, I get the text adding adding value like, all the time. Yeah. They're like, they're like, they're like, why? They're like, why'd you give me this book to read? And, yeah. I, and then, and then like send me a text like two days later and like, Oh, I, I Oh, it. I'm I like, get I get it because yeah. I'm trying to get you I'm trying to people. come around the other way. Yeah. And what yeah. I do, my favorite thing, and it's kind of weird because I have a photographic memory, Yeah. but what I'll do is I'll hold on to their words mm-hmm. for like three coaching sessions. Mm-hmm. And then like, right in that moment, I'll drop it on them. And they're like, who said that? And I'm like, you did. You did, Boom. motherfucker. That's good stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, you know, that's like, so true though. Because, because at the end of the day, if you think that I or you are going to give them something that they don't have inside them, mm-hmm. it's not the case. No. Nope. It's all in here. You just got to get out of your own way. Yeah. You just got to get it, help them identify, help, help them identify by that. Like my favorite thing to do now, it's almost like a, it's a fun game to me too, because they'll come in and, and, and that's part of it. That's like being good at it is like the fact that I enjoy it and I can, and I can see that they're close to figuring it out. But I, and I, I, I could tell them, but if I tell them 
then they're going to um, like rely on me. They're going to come to me for an answer when that, that's not always the case. And I might not even be right either. Like I think I am, but I'm not quite right. And so I'll ask questions and help them like lead them to that, to give the answer. And I'm like, okay, cool. Now that you've said that, go do it. And we'll come back next week and talk. And then sometimes they don't do it. And then we discuss further. So that's interesting. I've never, like when I started first coaching people, I was like, I have to provide tons of value. Right. And I'm like homework and like telling like, do this, do this, do this. And then I learned over time, like just by doing that, that that's not the, that's not why I'm there, I guess. Oh, no, and it's like, I have, I have those guys yeah. that we only talk during the coaching session. Yeah. We don't talk during the week, but when they text, you better get on the phone because yeah, yeah. you know, something's off. Something's up, and yeah. like, we, we caught him, you know, and ever since that day, like I caught him, like, you know, and we like, you know, he was like spiraling and we like caught him, mm-hmm. you know, but it's like, sometimes you have to be like uber aggressive because yeah. you have to say like, Hey man, like I'm not letting you quit on yourself here. Yeah. yeah. Like push, push, push. And then right when you get to the other side, yeah. you, you'll realize why you did it. And, and so sure. I think that's, I think that's in, in life in general. I think mm-hmm. there the the difference is and they and they and people ask this all the time is like you must want to all the time I'm like no i don't want to no. 90% of the time it goes back to the discipline motivation thing yeah for sure yeah but i do it and mm-hmm. then on the other side of that you're layering on each time yep for sure yeah and, and go back to what we said earlier is like you it, some there's are some times where i'm like i'm feeling off my game and i feel like maybe this dude's gonna call and cancel today because like i don't necessarily want to show up and do this coaching call because i feel like i can't give him and then he doesn't and then you get in this environment whether it's on zoom or in person and then you show up sometimes even better than you freaking like i don't know what it is Dude, i got i got it for you i got it for you yeah. so my coach and then my co-host who's this yeah. they're both like very well read yeah we did a podcast and uh man my my co-host is very smart. He's an author. Doesn't really talk all that much, but when he when he brings it, he brings it. And He's like, read that shit. So out. my coach was talking about how uh, he has ninety percent Jewish clients, and uh, it was like three weeks of holidays, so he didn't have his clients because they were mm-hmm. on their, their oh yeah, religious, yeah yeah sure sure yeah yeah their religious holidays, and yeah. he said he was freaking out because like he's very successful, but not being able to work. Like really was like messing with his mind, right? Yeah. Like even though he's super successful. Yeah. yeah. And he's like he couldn't pay his rent. <laughs> no, he could pay his yeah. rent. They're building yeah. this beautiful house right yeah, now. Yeah. But but he just wanted to work, you know. Yeah. And and so he said, Well, I started like meditate. I meditated like for an hour. And he's like, I thought to myself, like, well, okay, I'm off this morning. Like, what if I spent this time with my wife? What if we had breakfast? Mm-hmm. What if we went for a walk with a dog? And like he's like, I had to be available to see that moment. Mm. And my co-host said, or was that moment always available? Yeah. He just won. <laughs> we just fell off yeah, our chair like, because, yeah. because that's the mind. Fuck. Because we're acting like those moments aren't available. We right. just have to give ourselves permission to take them. I totally agree with you. Yeah. That's the hardest thing as a business owner. Mm-hmm. Because when you, oh, when you want to change the world, I don't want to say that. Like I'm like, I'm yeah. going to change the entire world. Like, that but like but you're going to change the, your world change the world that i have influence over yeah yeah that's the and that important. makes you dangerous yeah because nobody can compete with you yeah for sure yeah. because the the it's up here mm-hmm. and, and and everybody guys you need to find your space so if people want to mm-hmm. find about your podcast and follow your journey how would they do that yeah dude i mean honestly i i may be shifting here outside of just pdr into more of what i want to do now that i have influence here into uh into blue collar world, just more it, the trades in general, because I feel like I have influenced my industry. It's only certain, so many people that are listening to podcasts inside my little niche and I want to, uh, to expand that. So um, full disclosure, if you're not in PDR or not in blue collar trades, don't listen to my podcast. You will get nothing out of it. And I fully acknowledge that because that's who I am. I don't want to waste your time. Right. Um, if you don't do real estate, don't listen to real estate podcasts. All right. Pretty simple. Uh, my podcast currently is called the PDR coach podcast. Um, and that I, that's who I'm coaching, helping. I speak within the industry. I one-on-one coach. I have two separate masterminds, one for advanced business owners and one for new guys just starting in this weird, this little niche that we're in. Um, so that's my, 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 uh, Instagram handle is coach Corey K. Um, the PDR coach. That's, that's what I, that's my brand. Um, but yeah. 
That's what I, I do. It. I'm glad I had this. I'm glad I, we were able to have this conversation. Dude, I, I'm I'm telling Hopefully you, I, I can mean, help somebody. Are you kidding, man? I yeah. Fucking amazing conversation. <laughs> I'm fired up. Uh, guys, if you like this episode, send it out to your friends, share us, rate us and review yeah. us, and we'll see you next time. All right. Later. Thank you for listening to Construct Your Life with Austin Lenny. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, and pay it forward by sharing with a friend. Most importantly, take this opportunity to start constructing your life by taking immediate action on what you learn. For show notes, resources, and more information on one-on-one coaching with Austin, visit constructyourlifepodcast.com.